for a live stream. If it's your first time here, we meet every Friday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So mark it down on your calendar um, so you don't miss out. Today, basically, I'm going to be, we're going to be talking about the channel in general. I'm going to do like a little bit of a channel trailer recording here to put up on the channel to tell other people to subscribe. And uh, towards the end, I'm going to take your questions about learning piano and music as we usually do um, on Sundays. So Friday is the main lesson. Uh, that I put a lot of work into and then Sunday is usually like a free form kind of thing where I take your questions and answer them about music. So real wins of fans is don't forget to thumbs up the stream. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Adria is here once again. Let me say hi to everybody and get everybody uh, in here. Okay. And then uh, as I was talking uh, to some others, um, if you are just joining us now, think what I want you to do is I want to think I want you to think of and actually write down here in the chat if you are a regular attendee of the live stream or you've been watching my videos for a while, why should people subscribe to this channel? Because at the end of the channel trailer, I'm going to show um, the best comments. I'll probably show almost all of them um, it, as to why. You know, people should subscribe because I think it's better that they hear it from you, the actual students, than even from me. I'm going to give them some reasons too, but I think uh, you you can put it better into words than I can. So hopefully everybody's having a great evening. I'm doing pretty well, and um, you know, welcome back out to the classroom. So excited you could be here with us. We got Mike here again, uh, Adria, all the. All the classics. Nathan's back. I see you way better than YouTube Countdown, which just starts over Z after zero. Thank you. You're very welcome, Barbara. Uh, so I'm going to keep experimenting with the countdown that we did today, and we're going to see how that works. It's always a little bit of trial and error. Uh, when you're working with YouTube. So um, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the channel trailer first and then we're going to go on from there and then I'm going to talk about the channel a little bit, what some new things uh, are going on about, and then getting your input on some things that you would like to see uh, going forward in the channel. So um, let me kind of think for a second or look here at what I'm going to say. Okay. Hello students and welcome out to our channel or as I like to call it our classroom piano lessons on the web. I'm Tim and I'm going to be your teacher on this channel and I'm going to teach you about all the things you need to know to become a well-rounded piano player and musician. A lot of the lessons on this channel are geared for beginners learning these important topics for the first time. So if you're just starting out or if you like to take things a little bit slower, then you are definitely in the right place. I have a couple of lessons or a few lessons that, you know, kind of branch out into the intermediate and more advanced territory. But I like to stick to the beginners because I know there's a lot of people struggling uh, with learning these topics for the very first time. As you can see, I have a very nice setup where you can see all the things you need to see in order to learn piano. So you have me up here in the corner. That's not so important, but you can, you know, you need to see your teacher. And then, but I also have the piano keyboard where you can see and hear what I'm doing. And then we also have uh, the sheet music up here. I can show a ton of other things um, up here as well. And then I also like to do the classroom view or the live stream view where you can actually see the comments from us, uh, the community here on the channel. We have a nice thriving community in which <clears throat> with a lot of students that love to share their experiences and help us all learn together and contribute to the discussion. By the way, we meet every Friday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you definitely wanna make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the important updates and you learn as much as possible. You know, I could go on and on as to why you should subscribe to this channel, but I think I'm going to let some of the, our students do the talking for me since they have the best perspective, right? You're a student, they're a student. So let me show you what some of our great community has to say. Our student Adria says, the reason why I subscribe to Tim's channel is the in-depth discussion 
easy to understand and comprehension uh, definition on each subject and a very, very hands-on. So thank you very much. Again, I said we meet Fridays and Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you check us out so you can communicate with me and learn as much as you can. Okay, Fireflower says, Tim's lessons focus on music theory and not just piano. So if you want to learn other instruments, his lessons will also be very helpful. Real Winslet fan says, although I'm taking in real life lessons, checking out Tim's live stream is always providing me with new things to ask about and learn. Laredo says, Tim, I certainly always look forward to your lessons since I find them extremely helpful and enlightening. The subject matter covers quite a lot and offers theory as well as practice. Linda says, Tim is very patient and conscientious. He wants to make sure you understand. All right. Mike says, Tim is the best. I have truly learned more from him in a month since I discovered his channel. I feel like Tim is a personal friend and teacher sitting right here in my family room. So there you heard it from our students themselves. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you subscribe because we have new lessons coming out every week. We have the live streams going on and you don't want to miss a beat. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Thank you. And this has been Tim from Lessons on the Web. Have a great day. Yeah, I'll answer your question here in a minute, Sayish. I gotta, uh, I gotta get the, uh, I had to get the channel trailer done. Sorry about that. All right, Barbara says, um, Tim it makes people feel like they're a part of his group of friends. He tries to say hi to everybody and notices if you are new or come again. All right, yeah, I love uh, getting to know all of you for sure. Um, like I said, just be, uh, like even though I'm just kind of seeing your names go by with the text, I get to know a little bit about each of you each time, and it's really awesome. All right, let me answer Saish's question about sight reading, I think. Okay, let's see. Saish says, I'm terrible at sight reading. So I took out a print of the music sheets from the Belmont website, all right, and spent hours every day, and I've been doing this for a week. There has been improvement. Okay. Any tips? So any like additional tips beyond uh, what I've given you before? Um, basically, I just if you feel like you're making improvement, practicing it for you know hours a day, I would say keep doing it. You're gonna want to um, after there's quite a list of um, examples on the Belmont site. So if you're looking for more examples after that. Basically, my tip for you is to just keep doing it. Seriously, do it every day. And then after a while, you want to start sight reading things in different keys. And one of the great ways to do that is to pick up... There's some online here. A church hymnal. Uh, wait, so let me just say church hymnal PDF maybe. Oh, openhymnal.org. So I'll link this to you if it's any good. I want to kind of scroll down to make sure it's good. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. So once you get through all the introduction, hopefully... No, page down. Yeah. These look good. So the great thing about hymnals is one, they're what I said, they're in different keys each time. So this one's like in the key of A, the one before it's in the key of D, it looks like. Um, and they're very good because you have uh, basically chords being split up between both hands. So this is a lot more like music that you'll see because a lot of times in music, you don't just have chords in one hand, melody in the other. I mean, a lot of times you do do have that, but there's a lot of times where you don't. So this is a really good practice in splitting them up between the two. Let's see, F and C. Now, Barbara mentioned last time, I think. That sometimes the span between the notes is a little too far, so you can drop out one or two notes if you find that the um, stretch is a little bit too much for you. Uh, or you can even uh, split up, you can actually grab some of the left hand notes with your right hand. But I actually recommend 
you go th after you finish all the ones on belmont.edu i want you to go to here it's openhymnal.org but let me get you an actual link and um, the only really thing I have to tell you is keep sight reading every day. If you feel like you're making progress, you're definitely on the right track. And you definitely want to continue sight reading uh, things in different keys as well, which this will be perfect for. So let me give everybody a link. So just give me a second here. Okay, uh, Barbara says, I'd like to find a large print hymnal. Let me let me look that up for you, and then I'll address some of the other questions that may have come in. Um, let me see if I can find this. Let me just type in, um, you know, large print hymnal PDF. The Redback Hymnal, I'm not sure. Okay. Um... Large print hymnal. This might be good. This might be good. Let's see. Oh, this might. Is this only the only the words and not the music? Really? Well, that's not very useful. You're not going to get uh, better at sight reading doing that. You'll get better at regular reading. Let's see. Hymns for worship. Large print. Oh. They want $42 for that. No thanks. I mean, unless you you really want it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that one's... So these ones cost money. Uh, the only problem with that... I mean, it's probably not... Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. The only problem with that is if you pay money for it and it's not what you want, uh, that could be a problem. Um, maybe large, large notes hymnal. Let's see what that comes up with PDF. Uh, nope. <laughs> so if you ever get to a website and they want to add something to your computer, um, you probably should say no. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Barbara? I'm going to have to look on my own to see if I can find this. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like something that's just popping up. Um, right away. So if I come across one, I will, um, I will send you a link to it. Yeah, the ones I've seen were expensive. Yeah, that's what I saw too. So um, I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll have to take a look, and if somebody uh, sends me a link to one, I'll certainly share that with you. Okay. Hey, Linda's here. Okay, Real Winslet Fan says, uh, The piece I'm learning this week requires me to quickly play A plus G, fingers 1 and 5, on the left hand. Okay, A, G, right? It's a difficult stretch for me. Do you have any tips on making this easier? Um, yeah, so you're probably talking about this range right here from A to G, which is a seventh. That can be large for some, for sure. Uh, and I can relate because I have small hands. Um, I can only reach a ninth, and that's actually not too far. I have students that are like 10 that can, that can reach a ninth almost. Um, so I can certainly relate. So one of the tips that my piano teacher from college gave me is to do this. Instead of hitting them both at once, like that, what you want to do is, uh, especially, I don't know, are they making you hit them 
well, A plus G, which tells me you're hitting them all at once. So if you're ha if you have to hit them all at once, you can use this technique, and I call it. Oh, well, I think it's just called the rolling technique, where you play the bottom note first and the top note second, but you do it really fast. Now it takes, and you do it with the pedal. So it actually sounds like they're being played at the same time almost, like that. It takes a lot of getting used to. You're gonna be frustrated at first, cause I know I was when I first started doing it, but you just hit the bottom note first, top note second, and just see how fast you can do that. And instead of making your hand stretch the whole way, you're just hitting it one note at a time. I'm actually lifting up off of that first note when I hit the second one. Just like that. So try that out. Uh, that was the little tip that was given to me for that kind of thing. Okay. Barbara says, does an accidental on one staff apply to the other? Uh, you know, I had this question before, and I think the answer... It, it really depends, right? Uh, let me think about this. Let me let me type this in because I really don't want to give you give you the wrong answer. We had this come up before and we did get an answer for it, but I actually don't remember. Um, okay. Okay. Accidentals apply within the measure and octave in which they appear, unless canceled by another measure. Okay. Right? That makes sense. Or canceled by another um, accidental sign. If a note has an accidental and the note is repeated in a different octave within the same measure, the accidental does not apply to the same note in a different octave. So chances are is if, if you have um, an accidental up here, say an F sharp, and then after that you have something in the bass clef that's just F, then it will not apply. Okay, let's take a look. Um, I try to sight read something every day. I'll transcribe it into the computer, which actually isn't a bad idea. So I can listen back to it. I think it's helped improve my skill a lot. That's actually, that is a good idea if you like listening back to it, making sure that's absolutely correct. Um, so, and that's a great way to do it too, because you're actually looking through, you're sight reading in a different way, really. You're like, okay, I have an A here, and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna draw it here on the staff and things like that. So, um, you know, if you are struggling with sight reading, you might want to take up Real Winslet Fan on their suggestion. See if that helps you out as well. I've never, I mean, I have done that sort of thing, but I've never done it for sight reading. Let's see. Thanks for the link to the hymnal site. Secondhand stores have them often. Yeah, that is true. They do have them. Um, I have one, but it's not a large type, unfortunately. Okay, Terry Rowe says, as a, a very new beginner, how do I familiarize myself with the entire keyboard? The beginner songs stay mainly in the center octaves, okay? Uh, or will the issue take care of itself as I continue learning? If you follow my playlist on uh, the beginner's playlist that I recommend you take a look at, I'll link it to you here. Actually, let me show you where you can find that. Um, let me do this first, though. Okay. So if you go to our channel, you know, just type in lessons on the web into the good old YouTube. Oh, and there we are. Check that out. Okay. And you scroll down. You'll find a section that says recommended of order of lessons from beginning to end right here. And you watch this first one, Beginners Start Here, Piano Lesson Set 1. This will actually, through those lessons, will get you finding the notes on the keyboard. Now, to elaborate on your question a little bit, because you say, um, how do I familiarize myself with the entire keyboard? Uh, the beginner songs stay mainly in the center octaves, or uh, will learning take care of that uh, by itself? So also what I want you to do is I want you to check out this playlist right here called How to Read Music. These are all on the main channel page, uh, youtube.com slash lessons on the web. And you want to read, you want to watch through those. You especially want to watch the first lesson uh, here, and then you want to watch the second one, how to read music on ledger lines fast. So you want to check out that playlist of lessons as well. So let me uh, get you a couple of links to those so you can, so you know exactly where to go, but you can find them 
from the main channel page. So everybody just give me a second and I'll have these for you in a jiffy. Okay. There we go. There's that one. What is going on here? What? My chat is broken. That's not that's never happened before. Uh hold on. There we go. Okay, now we're back in session, so thank you for being patient, although it only took a minute. All right, if you watch those two playlists, that should help uh, clarify, but the answer is like, yeah, for the most part, that should get resolved as you continue learning piano. Okay, Catherine says, first of all, I do want to thank Mike for the super chat. I'll thank him again once I get down to that. At least I'm pretty sure it was Mike. All right, uh, let me get this situated. All right, perfect. Okay, Catherine says, yes, love hanging out with positive-minded people such as Tim and the crew. Really enjoying the lesson. Uh, lots, uh, lots learn, learn lots every session. I'm in for a lifetime, live time. All right, I sit uh, on lounge focus and take it all in. Well, thank you very much, Catherine. I appreciate that you are appreciating the lessons. Okay, so I says, do I need to, do I have to completely learn music theory uh, to sight reading? Uh, thanks for the link, by the way. Uh, music theory can help you with sight reading only because you're gonna have a better idea on what's happening. So if you learn your scales uh, per se, not chances are, you're definitely at some point going to see those scales in the music you play. So if you're used to playing the, say, the G major scale, and you know it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, well, when you see that in a piece of music, your brain automatically will find that and fill in those notes right away. So it's there's no need to read each individual note. You'll know what it is, and it also give you the proper fingering. So things like scales is really important. Learning your chords is really important. In terms of like chord progressions and things like that, the more advanced things, um, especially with some of the more advanced chords, um, maybe not quite as important. But again, you will see those things in your music. So the answer is yes. Music theory is very very helpful in um, sight reading but not absolutely necessary i wouldn't skip on um, out on music theory entirely i understand if you know you don't find it exciting and you want to get back to p uh, playing piano and sight reading but do spend some time learning about your chords and things like that actually chords and scales really are a part of playing piano anyway so the answer is yes Excuse me. Uh, Mike says, Mike asks, do you recommend learning the notes on the staff first or playing scales first or alternating between the two? Uh, learn the notes on the staff first. I'm getting very good on the treble clef and slow learning the bass clef. Yeah. So, so what you should do actually over the next few weeks is spend a lot of time just practicing the bass clef notes. I mean... <laughs> Practice the treble one still so you don't get too rusty on them. But I'd say, uh, say you have 20 minutes to spend on note reading. Um, spend 15 on the bass clef and then 5 minutes 
on the treble clef for the next few weeks until the bass clef's caught up. So you definitely want to learn your um, note reading first and then start tackling scales. You can start learning scales pretty soon after learning how to read music though, but you want to have that kind of mastered or at least be very proficient at reading music first. Okay, uh, Mike says, Tim, search organist hymnal. I will do that. Let me take a look. So we're looking for a large type hymnal uh, for Barbara and any others that are interested. So let me type this in. Oh, yeah, those are pretty good. Now all you have to do is find... Oh, here you go, PDF. Let's see. Okay, so sometimes PDFs take a while to load, especially if they are a little bit more hefty in file size. Uh, so let's take a look here. So while this is coming in, I want to thank Mike once again for leaving us a $5 super chat. Thank you very much, Mike. I really appreciate your support. And if anybody else wants to leave a super chat as a way to, you know, kind of leave a tip or say thank you, you can find that right here. So underneath your name, uh, there should be like a little icon that says super chat. You click that. And uh, if you want to leave a couple of dollars or something like that, you know, you can feel free. But if not, you want to sit back, relax, and enjoy the lesson, you can do that too. Ooh, I almost... <laughs> Hold on, everybody. I almost ruined my backdrop here. It almost, like, collapsed on me. <laughs> All right, we're back. All right, let's take a look here. Um, let's take a look. Scroll. Lots of scrolling. Oh, these are, oh no, this is all uh, like, no, no, uh, what is that called? Nooms or whatever. Okay, these are no good for what we need. Let me try to find one that is like piano. This is like the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's the exact, it is the exact same thing. Um... Okay, uh, so I don't want to spend a lot of time looking through for this. So, uh, Mike, if you can find a link for us, if that's possible, let me know. If not, I'll do some more research into this to see if I can find it. Because the the one with the square notation, I don't think is the one we want to look. That'll actually make things uh, harder uh, for Barbara, I think. Barbara says I'm the one that asked and I don't remember. Yeah, so it doesn't if it's out of that octave, uh, the accidental doesn't apply. But anything in the key signature that does apply to all of the notes, no matter uh, where they are. What is an accidental? Says Catherine. An accidental is a note that's sharp or flat. That it's like in the middle of the piece. It's not part of the key signature. So it would be something um, like, let me get the pen, the mighty pen. Pen is mightier than the sword, they say. So an accidental would be something like this, where you have like a sharp, that's not in the key signature. It's actually like right in the middle of the song. So that's an accidental. Okay, here we go. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I got some uh, flashcards to help with my sight reading. Very, very good. Good idea. Adria says, uh, channel, one or two channel ideas. You can add an upload section for the videos you've uploaded. Okay. If any of your lessons a student has inspired you, anything they did, practice differently, you can upload a series of videos, Tim's Piano Key Tidbits, a creative name of sort. Okay, let me see if I can um, understand what you're saying. You can add an upload section for all the videos you've uploaded. 
okay, that if if any of the lessons okay, so like uh, add a section that for videos that I've uploaded about uh, lessons that like a student has inspired me to do, anything they did practice differently. Uh, you can upload a series called uh, Tim's Piano Key Tidbits. I like that. Uh, upload that video to the channel, sharing that inspiration. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, one thing I was thinking of, let me know what you guys think about this. I would love to hold a, um, a recital of sort. Now, this wouldn't be live. This would be like something that you would pre-record and send to me. And then what I would do is during the live stream is I would show all the videos back to back pretty much. Um, you know, announce who the person is and what they're playing. And it would be just like a real recital, but with our students. So let me know if anybody's interested in that. I know it's going to be kind of like putting yourself out there a little bit. But if you don't want to show your face, you just want to record yourself playing. Like I only see, we only see your uh, hands. That's totally fine. Um, so if you kind of want to still remain a little bit of anonymous, that's perfectly fine as well. I thought that would be really, really neat to have a recital. Uh, with everybody. <laughs> Sai says, thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Hi, Tim. Have you done a lesson on jazz? Or do you think it's a good idea to make uh, a lesson out of it? Um, I feel like... I made the one on blues uh, just Friday, so we are moving in that direction a little bit. Um, jazz wouldn't be a bad idea, like an introduction to jazz music video. <laughs> but you know what I'm going to do? Because this happens sometimes. I've made so many videos that every once in a while I'll be like, oh yeah, I didn't make a video on that. And no, no me wrong, I can, re I can make a thing on the same, a lesson on the same topic, but just let me type in jazz lessons on the web and see if I do have anything. Okay, so the only one I've ever made was the one how to play and understand extended jazz chords uh, for beginners, which looks like it totally bombed. <laughs> 545 of views in six months ago. Um, okay, I have a thing on jazz chords, so I'm just making sure. So you know what? Uh, let me write this down. This is a good idea on jazz, uh, jazz chords. So let me let me just type this in. Whoa. All right. Okay, jazz. All right. So I got that down. Let's see. That would be cool, says Adria. Interesting idea, says uh, Real Ones at Fan. Yeah, I love the idea. Sounds like fun. Uh, that's cool, says Fireflower. I actually have recorded myself playing a couple of songs. But I haven't posted it anywhere yet. My playing still needs a lot of improvement. And that's okay. So if your playing isn't perfect, don't worry about it. I would still love uh, for you to share with me uh, and actually the rest of the group. And um, and then if you want me to give you um, you know some pointers on your playing after the whole recital is over, uh, you can let me know and I'll do that. But if you just kind of want to submit it just to kind of get it played out, uh, for everybody and not get any feedback, that's totally fine. So you're, it, it looks like some people really like this idea. Um, Barbara says, I don't know if I'm ready for a recital. That's okay, Barbara. So I understand that some of you probably um, are interested, but maybe aren't quite there yet. And that's fine. Honestly, if I get um, at least three students who are interested, which looks like we kind of have that already, um, I will, I will do it. I mean, I'll, I'll make a video out on YouTube uh, kind of announcing it, when it will be, and when your submissions need to be submitted by. Um, I'll have to give you a decent amount of time uh, to figure that out. But, yeah, that sounds like something we're going to do. I'm going to read Adria because Adria has uh, a comment here. As for my ideas, they were two separate ideas. Okay, the first was adding an upload section to your channel. Okay, so I can't do that. I don't think. You mean like where other people upload? And the second was adding a series of videos of any inspirations from your students. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Adrian says, I know my playing is gonna really need a lot of work. That's okay. 
All right, as for my idea, there are two separate ideas. Okay, I got you. I, I'm just a little confused on the upload, only because uh, I can't have a section unless I get people to send them to me and then I upload them. Because all the uh, all the lessons I post on the channel are uploads. I upload them um, to YouTube. But the second one, um, I really, I definitely like that one because I understand that one. The second was adding a series of videos. Any inspirations? Yeah, that's great. Let me write that down. Oops. All right, uh, Real Ones of Fans says, Recording yourself is enlightening anyway. Can't really tell what's going on otherwise. Very true. Uh, when I recorded myself, I've been disappointed with myself, says Barbara. Well, you know, um, I would keep at it, though, to, to be honest. Um, what I would do, though, is instead of just kind of randomly recording yourself, what I would do is I would pick a, a piece that you feel like you could learn in a relatively short amount of time. I mean, nothing like really, really high level, but pick an easier piece. And what I w would do is I would record you on the first day of playing that piece, the very first time you've looked at it, and then record yourself a few weeks later to see the difference in your playing. Because if you just take a snapshot, like if, if you just randomly say one day, okay, I'm gonna record myself playing this, and then you listen back to it, you might be disappointed because you have nothing to compare it to, but if you hear yourself improving, uh, then that should give you a little bit more motivation. Okay, Real Wins of Fan says, uh, it's helped me sort out some fingering. Very good. Catherine says, I am certainly not perfect. It's a work in progress. I'm only playing short tunes. All right. Hey, that's perfectly fine. What about a Facebook group where we can upload clips and have discussions throughout the week? Oh, that's a good idea. It can be a closed group with an invite, so we don't uh, have yeah, yahoos making off-topic comments. You know, on our on our um, YouTube channel or YouTube YouTube Facebook, I'm so used to using YouTube. On our Facebook group, which I think is just Facebook.com/lessons on the web. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it brings up the reviews right away. Oh, please log in. So Facebook absolutely requires me to log in, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to do that. You can actually post them here. Let me think about that idea some more. I like that idea. I really do. Uh, the upload sections are videos you upload. Okay, when you customize your channel, you can add what kind of uploads to show. Popular videos or regular just uh, content video uploads. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So um, I have that already, though. Uh, but I implemented it oh, maybe a week or no, a couple weeks ago, I think. Maybe a month ago at the most. Um, let's go to the... Man, hold on. Let's go here. We're going to go to the YouTube channel, and I'm going to show you. So, if you go to here... Oops, not Z Lessons on the Web. Lessons on the Web. Yeah, click right here. And then if you scroll down, you know, there's the upcoming live stream section. And then right below that, I have uh, everything organized into playlists. Now, you may be talking about individual lessons, which I, I'd have to make some sections for those for sure. But I do have them organized by topic. So you have piano lessons, music theory, excuse me, slash songwriting, and then you got, you know, reading music, rhythm, uh, playing with both hands. So a lot of the topics uh, that students have come to me um, and asked about. Now, the video section, I can't, I can't organize those. Those uh, you sort by over here. And you can choose most popular and things like that over there on the side. But I can't really mess with that uh, that part. The playlist should show up kind of like, okay, create a playlist. And then if you scroll down, 
there are the playlist sections, so the piano lessons again. So they are organized there, they are up there, but they're organized into playlists rather than single lessons. And I find that that's better because students will tend to watch one lesson and then watch a, few, a bunch more around the same kind of thing. Okay, um, I'm not sure if uh, Olufemi is referencing Rick and Morty or not. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure. Chips and Dips sounds like um, that play. They went to like one place in an episode of, of Rick and Morty called, I think it might have been called Dips and Chips. Chips and Dips. Uh, all right, I like the Facebook group idea. Yeah, I like that too, you know. Okay, Mike says uh, he couldn't find any hymnals for free. That's what I came across as well. I'm late, but glad I can join today. All right, thank you very much, Sue. Glad you were able to make it out. I like Nathan's Facebook idea. All right, so you know what? We're going to do that, I think. Um, okay, let's see. Let me Actually, let me type it here. This is even better. Here we go. Okay. Okay, uh, I love the Facebook idea. Love to see how uh, what others are doing. It'll add to your family. Yeah, you know what? Um, I need to figure out one thing. I need to figure out with that idea. I love that idea, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna do it. Um, the only problem I have with that idea is I need to figure out is can I integrate that into my existing Facebook uh, group? Because that would make the most sense. I mean, that's already called Lessons on the Web. Or should I make a new Facebook group? And because um, because the closed group idea is good, the only problem is is that I really don't have a lot of crazy people on my fa on the, the the channel's Facebook page, so I don't think it's necessary. At least right now, if we start getting a lot of crazy comments, um, I will have to do that. Let me think about that and see how that will work uh, logistically. But I like that idea, and a lot of other people seem to like it, so I think that's what we'll go with. Um, I can't recommend a tripod for your iPad Pro because I don't have one, unfortunately. Okay, it looks like I got to pretty much uh, everybody's comments and everything. Um, so I think we're going to wrap it up here. We had a wonderful discussion tonight. Uh, we got some great ideas. I like that Facebook group idea. I like the recital idea uh, that I've been playing around with. So I think um, I'm going to see if I can integrate those over the next few weeks. Uh, into the channel. I feel like there's one other thing I want to talk about. Oh, um, I just want to say, hold on. So if you are new to attending the live stream and you're like, I really like what I see on Tim's YouTube channel and I really want to take things to the next level or I want to get an even firmer grasp on the beginner topics. Well, you want to check out my channel, Piano Lessons on the web.com where I have over 20 courses that I made all designed to help you learn a lot more about piano, music theory, rhythm, 
sight reading, and a lot of the other things we talk on the, the channel. But it's not just videos like you see on the channel. There's also uh, printable sheet music, there's assignments, activities, and a lot of other things to enhance your learning. So if you think about, uh, I don't know if you've taken any online courses anywhere else, but it's a lot like that, where you do have videos, but you also have supporting materials for each, and it walks you through real methodically through each subject. You can uh, purchase courses individually. As you scroll down here, you can see what we have to offer. Uh, or you can purchase them in course packs and save some money. If you use code YouTube, you can get 15% off any order of courses. This includes any individual course or mixture of individual courses, any course pack, or even the all course access. So remember to use code YouTube uh, during checkout to get 15% off. Mike says, thanks for thinking I'm not crazy. My wife thinks I am. I think everybody's uh, wife, if they have, you know, I don't have a wife, but I think everybody's wife thinks they're crazy, I'm sure. Thanks for session, Tim. You're very welcome, Catherine. Do you have a Facebook group? Are you referring to your Facebook public page? I've tried looking for a group. Send a join request, uh, but none came up. Uh, Sue says, worth every cent. Sent a real bargain. Thank you very much, Sue. I really, really appreciate uh, that nice comment about the website. Okay, let me get to... Oh, yeah, Adri has a question here. Um, do you have a Facebook group? I do have a Facebook group. Let me link you to it. And it is a group. It's not just my personal Facebook. There's another one that's like uh, that says Tim Lessons on the web. That's not the right one. That's like an old one I made. So that should link you to the Facebook. This page isn't available. Uh, what? <laughs> what? Hold on. Why not? <laughs> Why isn't it available? Wait, what? That's right, though, isn't it? I just typed it in like two seconds ago. <laughs> Wait a second, hold on. Facebook.com slash lessons on the web. It loaded there. What? <laughs> hold on. Uh the, the let me let me get you a link. Okay. I messed up somehow. Hold on. Okay, Nathan says about the courses over on my website that I just mentioned. Nathan says the beginner's pack is awesome. That's what I'm using right now, and it's very helpful. Thank you so very much, Nathan. I appreciate that. So as you can see from our very own students here in our classroom, that they recommend the courses over on my website as well. So go over and check it out, pianolessonsontheweb.com. There's almost always a link in the description, and remember to use code YouTube uh, for that 15% off. Yeah, Nathan is using the paid courses. Yep. Link still no where? Wait, what? Why not? Why not? Wait, what? Hold on. It works for me. What? What? <laughs> like, I don't understand. What's weird is like if I type it into my browser, everybody type in facebook.com slash lessons on the web and see if it comes up. It might be YouTube blocking it for some reason. Why? <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, I'm going to link you to my website. F works now. Okay. 
That is weird. Okay, so hopefully it works. You can find it on, on Facebook pretty easily. Uh, sorry for the confusion. Not sure what it is. And let me link uh, everybody to my website if you haven't been there uh, yet. Hold on. Oh, it's not a group. It's a page. Okay. Um, let me see if I can make a group then. That is true. That is, uh, that is a group. Okay, so hopefully this link works, piano lessons on the web.com, and uh, the link is also in the description for you. So I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, um, being a part of our awesome community. It really means a lot to me, and it really keeps me going, making better lessons than ever before. Okay, so maybe it has to do with ad blocker, says uh, Barbara. Sorry, I got to... I wanted to answer uh, Barbara's comment there. But anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Thank you for being an awesome part of our community. We're going to meet again on Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at around, uh, oh wait, the same time, 8 p.m. Uh, so make sure you check us out then. So Fridays and Sundays uh, is when we meet. And feel free to stop by. Always would love to see a new and returning students. So this has been Tim from Lessons on the Web. Everybody have a great night, and I'll talk to you real, real soon. Okay, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba, Tim, wait a second. Uh, Jordan says, Tim. Jordan says, Tim, I'm trying to tell you something on your email, but it keeps saying try again for 6x. Uh, yeah, I'll play some blues. Try uh, Jordan. I'm not sure what you mean. Like you're trying to email me uh, at my account on my website. Try again for six X. Uh, I'm a little confused, uh, but I'll play a little bit of blues while you. six times try again for six times um on your email so you're trying to email me and it's saying try again at six times okay weird um let me look let me check this out this is pretty important <laughs> so i don't want to leave you in the dark here All right, uh, bu bu bu, we got Adria says, um, thanks again. I just love that we can come together and learn piano, but also just talk. Good night, everybody. I'm into, amen to that. I feel like I'm a big part of one happy family. Thank you very much, Mike. And I actually got a very nice email um, from some other students recently that I will get back to tomorrow. Trash, I don't know. Um, so Jordan, try, e so are you emailing me Tim at LessonsOnTheWeb.com? I looked at Jerry Roll Morton, he claimed to have invented jazz. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one.
Uh, let's see, Jordan, when was the last time you tried to email me? All right. Uh, bu, bu, bu. Let me see. You help me there. Let me see. Um, hmm. All right. Time for me to scoot. Thanks, Tim. Bye, y'all. All right. Bye, Real Winslet fan. All right. So. Hold on, my email is looking a little wonky. Um, you know what? It looks like my email server could be down. Um, or, or Jordan, were you trying to reach me tonight? Or when was this that uh, it wasn't coming through? Okay, hold on. Let me find it. Okay. Um, I got... The last time I got back to you was on the 29th uh, of 2018. So try getting through to me again, because I did get that email. I'm not sure why I'm not getting your others. All right, good night, Adria. Have a great night. All right, uh, Jordan, try to get in contact with me. If not, uh, use my Facebook, facebook.com slash lessons on the web and send me a, um, a question there. Um, I'm not sure why your email isn't getting through. It's a little disconcerting to, to me because I want to make sure uh, the emails are getting through. It looks like the other ones are, though. Um, few days ago. Yeah, I don't think I ever got that one, Jordan. Try try emailing me again. It could be that my email server was down. Sometimes it's down for some reason and then it just takes a little bit of time to record uh, recover, uh, but it should uh, so just try again. Okay, Mike is testing. Okay, test the email. Yeah, I got it from Mike. So I got a test email from Mike um, just now pretty much, like a minute ago. So I am getting emails. Thanks for testing that out, Mike. Um, so Jordan, just try again. And uh, if you don't get through then, we're going to work something else out. But it looks like I am getting uh, emails from everybody else. So it could be something on your end. Um it could just be that the email server was down at that time. So, sorry about that. So, I'm going to cash out here, everybody. Um, if you still have any problems joining the next uh, session, let me know, and I'll look more into it. So, thanks, everybody, for stopping by, and I'll check you out for the next lesson. This has been Tim from Lessons on the Web. Thank you so, so much.